Fanatics on the banks of Volga, cannibals in the mountain bunker, slavers on the shores of the dried out sea. How many monsters has the war given rise to? Or perhaps, were they always there? And the war simply gave them a chance to show themselves, and now we're stuck with them forever. Will Damir, who stayed in the desert to help Kyul lead their people to freedom, beat another monster? The inertia of thought that had been keeping the subjugated locals in willing and ready servitude to tyrants? Frankly, I have doubts. That monster might prove stronger than all the others. Regardless, we can't afford to lose hope. We're getting ever closer to our dream. Finding a place where we could live, free from radiation and mutants. The maps we recovered in the desert have provided us with several promising options. And now the crew members are excitedly waiting for the Colonel's decision on where the Aurora should go next. Currently, though, the train is calmly rolling eastward. The crew rests and Stepan proposed to Katya. It was a proposal she couldn't refuse. long ago, and it still persists. <clears throat> what does Crest even smoke? <laughs> it's terrible. In any case, I'm better now. I hate to interrupt, guys, but uh, you should come to the mess hall. The table is almost served. Thanks, Stepan. We'll be there in a moment. Shall we go, Artyom? Or shall we stay a little longer? It's so nice. You know, Artyom, I've been looking at Stepan and Katya, you and me, and thinking how lucky we are. It was so different with my parents. It was bad. Did I ever tell you why my mom died? Of course I didn't. It was because of Dad. He used to be even harsher back then. He used to come home from the barracks and reach for the bottle while taking off his boots. They'd quarrel, and then he'd stop appearing for a time. And while he was away, she'd start drinking too, and crying when she was sober. She'd feel better, would get kind of dreamy when drunk. You know how she used to call me? Just A. She'd hug me and say, One day, A, you and I are going to go to Vladivostok, the city I was born in. And from there, to a village on the ocean shore. I was five back then and didn't really get much. But I could imagine that village and the ocean so vividly, because I believed her. And then she killed herself, drank some kind of poison. Father quit drinking after Mom's death. Didn't ever pay much attention to me, but with her gone, he'd never leave me alone. Took me along everywhere. We only talked about her a couple of times, though. I used to have this doll, Jana. I played make-believe that she was my daughter, and we went to the ocean together. Then, my father hid it. Told me it got lost. He probably didn't want me to agonize over Mom's dream. Then I imagine she grew up and went to Vladivostok. And now I'm going. Not to Vladivostok, but with you. The dream came true. By the way, I was always intrigued by what Dad dreams about. He should have some dreams, so what are they? Higher rank? He could choose any. Saving people? What would the saved do next? Sit underground? I never understood him. 
What does he hope for in life? What makes him happy? Nothing, perhaps. He never really had any time to think about tomorrow. Down in the metro, those thoughts don't come casually. Here on the surface, though. I, for one, have something I want to do. I want to run through the sand barefoot. Build a sand castle for the kids. I'm imagining two. A boy and a girl. The boy would be a copy of you. We'd go swimming with mountains behind us. Wooden houses on the shore. The sun would wake us up every day, rising from the ocean. That harbor is our destination. Worth going there even if we have half the world to cross. Everyone should have a destination. A point on the map where they aspire to go, and where one could finally be happy. All our guys have their own. Damir, another. We broke out of the metro and are now starting to scatter. Not at once, of course. At first, we're all still running together, searching. But eventually, each of us will find a point like this and stay there. I don't know where my dad's destination is. Don't know where yours is either. But I know I love you a whole lot. Go, Artyom. I'll rest some more and join you later. Attention, please. Half a year on the road, and 4,000 clicks behind us. We have been through a lot. Damir. All right, people. I do understand I can't keep it a secret much longer. After a careful study of the satellite maps we've obtained, and much deliberation, we've found a place we could call our new home. It is a river valley. There's forest and a hydroelectric power plant. Yeah. This place is quite far from densely populated areas, which, as our journey has proven, is important. We're about two days away from it now. So, congratulations! Yeah! 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 yeah. 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 Yet, this is not our last order of business for today. <laughs> Stepan, Katya. Oh, rings! Stepan, Katya, repeat after me. I take you to be my spouse. I take you to be my spouse. And vow to hold you from this day forward. And vow to hold you from this day forward, for better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish, to love and until, to cherish death until death do us part. Do us part.
as the captain of this ship, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. Live long and be happy. Oh, and Gorka! 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 Oh! This, the old man is furious. Oh, Artyom's getting chewed out today. It's not Artyom's fault. I fell into that stupid bunker all by myself. And if Dad says one word to him about it, I'll tear him a new one. Yes. In any case, Katya will calm the Colonel down. You shouldn't worry either, Anna. She'll fix you in no time at all. She's good. No doubt about that. We drew the lucky ticket with her, especially you, Stepan. That's it, that. Thank you, Anna. So, son, care to tell me what Arno, do we do please. now? Let us not panic and think constructively. So, Katya, what do you think? I think that trusting some degenerate's diagnosis wouldn't be wise. A move from humid metro into the desert with its dry heat and sandstorms is a stress for long. Yes, I do think she'd be hit really bad right off the start. Had my it thoughts been gas. exactly. Thus, first I'll check her condition to the best of my knowledge. Also, we're approaching the valley with its forest air. That alone could heal her. I'm sorry to intervene, but did something happen? Oh, Anna coughed out some blood. My god. Do you really think it's the sand? Sounds more like TB to me. That's for sure. Maybe we can handle. We've got enough antibiotics, and air does help with that. What if... What if that degenerate was right, Katya? What do we do? Is there medicine? There was an air defense battery station in our village. Right on the brink of war, they received a new drug. It saved a lot of people after gas exposure and general poisoning. I'll check my mom's records and find its name. I think it was produced in Novosibirsk. Right, Novosibirsk. You're a Your opinion. For Lena's sake, I'd go to the edges of the earth. As for Novosibirsk, it's about 2,000 clicks. The race decided. We head for the valley. If it is suitable, we settle there. The Vara state worsens. I'll take a group of volunteers to find that drug. So Katya, please, find that name for I'll us. I'll find it. Don't worry. One more thing, Artyom. I want no surprises in that valley. You are our most seasoned scout. So take the rail car, one volunteer, Go check everything out before we arrive. Let's go back for now. Tell Anna and the people to go down. Now I understand why she was so down like this. Just imagine thinking about all that for so long. So, you want to see what you're Here are your orders. 
orders, everyone. First of all, stay calm. The plan stands. We head for that valley with its fresh air and clean water. Then we go about settling there. If Anna's health... Dad, please. I repeat, Anna, in case you start getting worse, there's a drug Katya told us about, so we can go and find it for you, if it is needed. Mm, that sounds like a great plan. I'd also like to say this. Guys, please don't worry. I've been feeling pretty bad as it is for ruining the party. Oh, come on. You didn't ruin anything. I just brought myself down to rock bottom over that bastard from Yamantau. Though it must just be the sand and desert climate. Of course that must be it. We were discussing exactly that just now. All right, a toast to you guys. Just be happy together. To you, a toast to you. Stefan, will you play that song about us? <laughs> Easy as pie. Surprises like the ones we had on the Volga or in Yamantau. So we're sending a scouting party ahead on a rail car. Artyom needs a volunteer to support him. Me! Pick me! I'll check the hell out of that valley, please! <laughs> Something makes me think that Alyosha is mainly going to check if there are any Amazons or women in general there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all set. Frankly, I envy you, Stepan. You got a full family, a wife and child at once. And you don't have to worry about diapers or belly aches. Envy is a bad thing. 
We're not the ones to avoid diapers, Colonel. In fact, we're planning to present Nastya with a little brother, if she doesn't object. I'd rather get a sister. We could play with dolls together. I could care for her. You could play Sparta in special operations with the brother. Ah, cut it out, Stepan. God knows we've had enough of operations. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'd like to retire. Time to have some life. You can't retire yet. You're too young. <laughs> I am old, Nastya. You're not. Ah, you said envy was a bad thing, Nastya. Huh? But what am I to do? Your mom has you, but my Anna doesn't have a smart girl like you. Dad. Don't dad me! A 20-year-old won't even think about children. But I would sure like to see grandchildren at my age. Yeah, you'd teach them CQC. Dual-wielding pistols. <laughs> <laughs> I could come visit you. Of course, you're welcome, Nastya. The thing is, Grandpa Miller won't give up until he has grandchildren of his own. Hear that, Artyom? I don't even know what else to say. She's beautiful, sporting. Yeah, I'm Olympic level with a rifle. I get not having kids in Metro. Darkness, TB, rats, mutations. But what about here? <laughs> All right, Dad. We'll get to work on solving your problem tonight. At that note, how about a drink? To repopulation of Earth. To kids. Yes! To children! To children! To children. <sighs> the stuff is strong. Oh, one more this is great. To the new colony. May it grow and prosper. <sighs> to, the to the new colony. <laughs> Just like water. Oh, and having more yes. women joining! Ambrosia. <laughs> Alyosha, I never doubted you. Yes, Alyosha. I don't think you should be worried about that. If we are successful, there will be people joining us. Honest, good people. I'm sure they survive too. Well, if any bad people decide to show up, they'll be sorry they did. <laughs> oh, definitely. When we're done with the bad apples here, we might think of something to do about Moscow. That's true. To love! To, to love! love. <sighs> <sighs> oh, it's your turn, Artyom. Come on, impress us. This heat is just unbearable, I must say. <laughs> Sit with me, Artyom.
on, play some more. Step on. Could you give us that one? By Boris. My pleasure. Полковник Васин приехал на фронт со своей молодой женой. Полковник Васин созвал свой полк и сказал им, пойдем домой. Мы ведем войну уже 70 лет, нас учили, что жизнь это бой. Но по новым данным разведки мы воевали сами с собой. Я видел генералов, они пьют и едят нашу смерть. И дети сходят с ума от того, что им нечего больше хотеть. А земля лежит в ржавчине, церкви смешались с золой. И если мы хотим, чтобы было куда вернуться, время вернуться домой. Этот поезд в огне, и на мне на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и на мне куда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничьей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. А кругом горят факелы, это сбор всех погибших частей. И люди, стрелявшие в наших отцов, строят планы на наших детей. Нас сражали под звуки марши, нас пугали тюрьмой. Но хватит ползать на брюхи, мы уже возвратились домой. Этот поезд в огне, и на мне на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и на мне куда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. Этот поезд в огне, и на мне на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и на мне куда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничьей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. Some more, Stepan? Give the receiver another pass. It seems somewhat spot. Ah, hello, Artyom. Hello, my friend. is a real magic chief. Now she'll put her back on the feet in no time at all. That sounds interesting. I haven't fixed one yet. So don't worry, Antiovich. Everything will be fine. Soon we'll have a chance at normal lives at that venue, you know? Are you and Anna gonna have kids? Artyom, 
Shots, about time, Bratucha. Moscow doesn't sound right for those with radiation and all, but the valley... Oh, that's the place. And Stepan and Katya would follow suit, too, since they're married. We do have to populate the colony, you know. We'll build a good one, too, with some skilled people and, most importantly, smart people. And we'll surely attract more. And if some assholes decide to crash the party, ho, ho, ho. We'll send them packing in no time with our guys. Of course, that valley needs checking out first. The colonel is absolutely right. But you and Alyosha, you can handle that. No problem. Boy, that cask mountain? Oh, I had this nasty feeling back then. I even told the colonel why. He was so eager to see that minister of his, he didn't care. Not quite like him, huh? Well, that's to be expected, you know? Everyone has a string which, when pulled, makes you forget about everything else. Take Damir, for example. Fancied himself the chair. I wonder how is he now? Though, I guess he'll be alright fighting the good fight with that duel. On the other hand, imagine us coming back and seeing him in Baron's vacant chair. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Amiz is a good guy. He never loses his way like that. Now, ah, well, <coughs> I think I'll finish with your trophy here. Go prepare the rail car for a recon trip with Alyosha. Speaking of him, I think he wanted to go with you so badly because he also had a feeling, you know, in his usual direction. <laughs> Look after the Tletcher before he finds his, uh, you know, head stuck somewhere nasty, will you? So, I have to give it to you, Bratuka. Bringing this beauty here was a stroke of genius. I feel she's going to help us a lot. Mind you, I'm not trading my rail card for anything in the world, but this baby here is just amazing. Never mind the looks, her engine has been finely tuned and maintained. She's got a strengthened frame and springs, even her brakes are in perfect form. The mechanics, skill and passion are as plain as day here, and I love that. 